Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Seattle Pilots versus the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is John Gelnar, whose record is 6-1 with a 3.22 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Les Kane, whose record is 8-2 with a 3.46 ERA. Well, you should, if you're not already, um, have become accustomed to shutouts. So we've got three in a row. Uh, we won yesterday's game 1-0, our 15th shutout of the season. And uh, we won, you know, on a wild pitch. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I know that happens. I know shutouts are not impossible, but... The fact that we've thrown 15 and our opponents have had seven, um, I don't know, I guess it's an indication of how baseball was uh, back in the uh, late 60s. It's kind of disappointing um, to not be able to put up any runs and then put up a ton of runs and then not put up any runs. Um, but, you know, I think at least we're 10 games over 500. we We're still in the race. Uh, we are only... Here we go. Five and a half back, tied with uh, Minnesota for second. Uh, we do have a chance. That's all you can ask for um, as we are in the dog days of the uh, season uh, here in the middle of August. The good news is we get Gene Brabender back in 11 day days. Uh, so that will help us out. We'll go back to a five-man rotation at that point. Um, and Gene Rollins will, will be back in uh, two weeks. So he'll become our, our everyday third baseman once again. And if we don't suffer any other injuries, then I think it's safe to say uh, we should still be involved in the race uh, for the American League West. Um, also, today is uh, March 3rd. So on Monday, March 7th, we're going to do the uh, Detroit Tigers uh, American League East uh, Division preview for the uh, 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay that is uh, forthcoming uh, on April 1st. So we'll, we'll have our first division preview uh, coming up this Monday. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have got our... Number four starter on the mound today is John Gelnar. Um, Gelnar has been a really nice surprise. He's six and one and has been uh, pretty damn good for us as uh, the game is taking its time loading. Uh, it's now simulating. Here we go. I don't know why it does that, but I, I've said it before. If it is my computer, my laptop, I'm getting a new laptop. Uh, when I get my taxes back, I think I've I've settled on that. So, uh, Joe uh, John Gelnar on the mound, as I mentioned, he has not faced the Tigers. All of the bullpen is available, um, thanks to our shutout yesterday. You know, and the the formula seems to be working. You know, uh, let our pitch our starting pitcher go five innings, get him in line for the win, and then get him out of there and try to win the ball game. Now, Meyer did not get the win yesterday. We uh, pulled him out when we were tied at zero. But he pitched good enough to get the win, and that's all that matters. Here is our lineup versus the left-hander, Les Kane. Uh, all the good guys are in there. Versus uh, lefties, is there anybody sitting out? No, that's uh, all of our, our regulars are in there. Versus the left-hander, Les Kane. Let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown. For the Detroit Tigers, batting leadoff, playing second base, is Gary Sutherland. Batting second at shortstop is Freddie Patek. Batting third in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting cleanup, playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in center field is Don Bosch. Batting sixth in right field is Tommy Agee. Batting 7th and catching is Jerry McNurtney. Batting 8th at 3rd base is Don Kessinger. And batting ninth is the pitcher John Gelnar. 
Okay, let's take a look here at Les Kane. Uh, he is making his 13th start of the season. He's 8-2 and two with a 3.46 ERA, 62 strikeouts in 88 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 241 against him. He does have one complete game. It was a shutout. Fastball tops out at 97 miles an hour, and it's rated a 96. So that is maybe the best fastball we've seen. Uh, he does have a sidearm curve. A couple off-speed pitches, really. Uh, neither one a particularly great. Overall rated an 86. The 21-year-old lefty is arbitration eligible in 1971. I know we have faced him. Look at his log. There he is. Uh, June 10th, he won his first game of the year. Uh, he went eight innings, giving up three runs on eight hits and uh, four walks and uh, walked away with the win. And in fact, he has only lost once since then, and that was to Oakland. So he is pitching very well this year as a 21-year-old. There's the defense for the Tigers. Uh, they are below average at first, which is John Ellis, second base, which is Ike Brown, and out there in left field, which is Ollie Brown. Okay. Here we go. Gary Sutherland leading off versus Les Kane. Sutherland still batting right around three, uh, well, almost at 400 now as he starts the game off with a base hit. How can a guy with a 60... 7 or 69 rating be batting 335 I don't know okay um, we are going to let Patek swing away I believe he had yesterday off I can't remember now if he was the one player who needed the, the day off he pops it up to second that won't get it done that will bring up Lou Pinella will hit and run with Lou Something he does well. Sharply hit ball to shortstop. That'll move Sutherland over. Pinella has dropped down to a 280 batting average. Look at these um, top four. I mean, you, you can even throw Bosch in there. We are really starting to hit well. Okay, a Darren Johnson. A chance here to drive in the first run of the ball game. And he strikes out looking. I mean... <laughs> We've, we've scored one run in uh, the last two games. Okay, let's take a look at the Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing second base is Ike Brown. Batting second in right field is Jim Northrup. Batting third at first base is John Ellis. Batting cleanup and catching is... I hit it. Let's go. It's not responding. What's the deal? We're having some issues here. Batting cleanup and catching is Tim Hosley. Batting fifth in left field is Gates Brown. Batting sixth in center field is Ron Woods. Batting seventh at third base is Don Wirt. Batting eighth at shortstop is Tom Magic. And batting ninth is the pitcher Les Kane. Okay, let's take a look here at John Gelnar making his nice start. Six and one with a 322 ERA, 35 strikeouts, 50 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 236 against him. Fastball topping out at 91 miles an hour. Uh, his fastball is his only good pitch, rated an 85. Overall, he's only rated a 76. The 26 year old righty. Arbitration eligible in 1971. Look at his log. And you will see that he's on a similar win streak to Les Kane. Um, other than the one loss to Kansas City, he's pitched pretty damn good. Now, most of his games have been against teams that are struggling. All these games versus Kansas City. I'm sorry, uh, California. Kansas City a couple times. Boston's in last place. So he hasn't really faced anyone formidable other than the Baltimore and the um, the Oakland uh, start. So uh, I don't know what he is yet. We can't, it's hard to say when all you're doing is beating up on 
uh, the weak teams. Here's our defense today. Um, the usual struggling at first, second, and at catcher. Here we go. Ike Brown leading off versus John Gelnar. Full count. And Gelnar strikes him out. That's a good way to start the ballgame. Next up is Jim Northrup. Northrup, 240 hitter, 11 home runs. A ground ball to Johnson at first. Easy play. He steps on the bag. Two down. And here's John Ellis. John Ellis came over in the uh, trade uh, with the Yankees for Bob Bailey. Um, and he's basically taken over the first base job. He also is a catcher. I don't think he catches in this scenario, but there's a base hit in the center field. Actually, I'm curious. Let's see. Defensively, uh, no, he is not caught. In fact, yeah, he's played all 45 games at first base. Okay. You can see he caught in the minors. So two down, runner on first. And here is the catcher, Tim Hosley. Batting 250, five home runs, shot to center, and Bosch makes the catch. Moving on to the second inning with Bosch leading off. Bosch batting 286 versus lefties. He will take a walk to first. Now, Bosch has an 89 speed, but we have really not attempted to run with him. He's only got one stolen base as a pilot and he's been thrown out four times um, so it's we're not really utilizing that aspect and it would only be a 63 percent chance of him stealing um, so we're gonna let AG take a cut here full count to AG and he strikes out AG has been horrible average down to 227 that's going to bring up Jerry McNurtney with one down. McNurtney, just under 250. Nine home runs. He may be the second pilot to get 10 uh, home runs this year as he loops one into a left field for a hit. McNurtney up to 251. So this is going to bring up Don Kessinger. Uh, we will hit and run here, first and third, less than two outs. Stay out of the double play and hopefully score a run one two count to Kessinger and there it is a slow roller to second that will score the run it's one nothing Seattle hey I'll take a um a uh oh was that an infield single oh that was an infield single I thought that was a ground ball to second so we'll take an RBI single I was thinking that was uh, safe on a fielder's choice but it was not. Let's go ahead and drop a bunt down here for John Gelnar. Betting 250. Gelnar. Gelnar, we actually pinch hit with this season in that 16 inning game when we ran out of uh, base run, or, uh, uh, bench guys. So it's second and third as Gelnar lays down the bunt. And Gary Sutherland is up. Got to feel good about the situation. Oh, no. 2-2 two, two count. He pulls it to third. And that will do it. That's too bad. So we strand two runners. We do score on the Kessinger infield single. We go to the bottom of the second. Up a run. And Gates Brown leading off. 3-1 count to Brown. Ground ball to short. There's one out. I don't know if it's because Gelnar has only got the one good pitch, but it seems like he gets all of his outs on the curveball instead of the fastball. It's like he keeps them, uh, everyone's expecting the fastball, and then he throws nothing but the curve as Ron Woods pops up. Two down, here's Don Wirt. Oh, two count to Wirt. Oh, there's a base hit right back through the box. He was waiting on the fastball. You throw him three straight fastballs, he's in the same general area at the same speed. And um, good hitters will know exactly what to do with it. 
And Magic goes to left. First and third, two down, and the pitcher, Les Kane up. I like having the pitcher up in this scenario. First pitch swinging. Fly ball into left center field. That should be easy for Pinella. Keep him off the board, go to the top of the third. Here's Freddie Patek leading off. 240 hitter versus lefties. That's going to be in the hole at short. Magic tossing him out. One down. Here's Lou. Lou still batting 358 versus lefties, but I mean, he's his average has dropped way down. There we go. Base hit to right field. Maybe that'll snap him out of his streak. I mean, it's possible Lou Pinella could just be a platoon guy in left. Um, I guess we could put Hegan over there against right-handers. I don't know. Uh, here's uh, Darren Johnson with Pinella on first. One down. 0-2 count. And he strikes out swinging. Two outs. Don Bosch up. 3-1 count, and he walks for the second time. It's first and second. Tommy Agee at the plate. I have no expectations for Tommy Agee. And a base hit to left. Keep the expectations low. And Pinella scores from second base. So give Agee an RBI single. Bosch holds at second. Um, I mean, I guess that's realistic, right? Instead of going to third with two outs, because I'm assuming Bosch held and that run scored because he did not throw home. Did not draw the throw. And that makes sense that he would score. So it's 2 nothing. Here is Jerry McNerty. McNerty had a base hit first time up. 0-1 count. He shoots it to the right side of the infield. And the second baseman, Brown, tosses him out. So we add to the lead. It's 2 nothing. Bottom of the third. And here's Ike Brown. Struck out to lead off the game. And a base hit to left. Okay, so this is where we have to start thinking about maybe Gelnar not having it today. I mean, he's only given up four hits. But um, this feels like they're about ready to break out on him here. There's a ground ball in the hole. It's short. I could be wrong. Uh, would have been great to have a double play there. Instead, the only play was to first. So, runner on second, one down. If, if Gelnar goes after Ellis with some fastballs. First pitch swinging. And the base up the middle. So, that'll make it two to one. Oh, Brown holds at third. That makes no sense at all. That, that makes no sense at all. It was a base hit up the middle. I guess maybe he had to wait and see. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand the, the baseball logic. Because, I mean, you're, you're visualizing where the ball is going, which is right back up the middle. And it's only like base hits through the infield are here, here, and here, right? Or you might get an infield single somewhere in the grassy area. And, you know, I, in my mind, if you hit a ground ball in the center field and you have a guy with an 85 speed, he should score from second base. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Um... Look, I think we're going to play back and try to get a double play. Ellis doesn't have speed, and Hosley's a catcher. A ground ball probably scores Brown anyway. So let's go ahead and play back, try to get a double play. Here we go. One-two count. And he strikes him out. We'll take that. It does bring up the best hitter on the team, though, Gates Brown. The lefty batting 280. Versus righties with a, almost a 500 slugging percentage. So one swing of the bat would, could give the uh, 
Tigers the lead, a 1-1 count, and a base hit. I mean, there was nothing we could do to stop that. It's 2-1. to one. Tying run is on second. Ron Woods is up. RBI single there from Gates Brown. And a looper to right. AG. Well, no, it's going to be caught by the second baseman, Sutherland. So the Tigers get on the board. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Kessinger leading off. He's one for one today. He had that odd infield single that drove in the first run. There he grounds out to short. I guess we'll let Kelnar, uh, Gelnar bat here. He is batting two, Fitty. Oh, a line drive right at the first baseman. I was hoping they would get through. Two quick outs for Kane as Sutherland steps in. He's three for six versus Kane. One for two today. And he hits a high fly ball to right field. Catchable by Northrop. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's the bottom third of the lineup for Detroit. I do believe Gelnar can get through one more here. Don Wirt leads off, and he walks. The way. Come on, man. Threw a lot of pitches. Threw 10 pitches at it, bat. That's the first walk. Um, we're going to pull third base in. Magic is a good bunner. Pitcher spot is up next. 2-0. Two, 2-0 uh, count, and there's a base hit. So. All right, well, that's all we need to know about this game today. We've got to pull the infield in now. Um, maybe we can get lucky and get one out. Pitcher Kane's up. Hot shot to first. Johnson. What did he do? He just got the run at uh, the base runner at first. So Wirt did not go. Magic advanced. And the only play, I guess maybe if the hit and run was on, but then he didn't run. I don't know. What am I? Th what am I doing? Why, why am I trying to find logic in this? Well, now we got to pull the infield in again because um, we could walk Brown, but that would load the bases with only one out. So we'll pull the infield in again, uh, try to prevent a run, but a base hit will score two and give him the lead. He strikes him out. Uh, it was it. Well, it shows that it crossed here, but it looked like it crossed right down here. So I don't know if the umpires just not seeing it right, but we'll take it. Now, do we walk Northrop to load the bases to get to Ellis? The lefty is only batting two thirty-five. Versus right-handers, but um, Gelnar has given up seven hits and a walk. I mean, I think we just got to let him take a cut. If he gets out of it, great. If he doesn't, then uh, we're going to take the have some real struggles here. That is a pop-up to second. Sutherland makes the play. All right. So we hold on to the lead. We go to the top of the fifth. Here's Freddie Potek leading off. Kane's at 74 pitches. Patek a base hit to left. Let's go for two. Oh, he's not going to make it. Only a 40% chance. That's okay. We got a hit and run guy up. Penilla, last at bat, got a base hit. Broke out, out of his slump. 0-1 count. Hard hit, ground ball to first. Gets Patek over. Let's see if Darren Johnson can drive him in here. 1 0 count. And he pops it. Come on. Two down. Don Bosch is up. Now, Bosch does have one career home run 
versus Les Kane. 0-1 oh, count to Bosch. He does crush it to center. Unfortunately, it's in the area of Ron Woods. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Let's see if we can't get Gelnar through the heart of the lineup here. 3, 4, and 5 do up. None of these guys are crushers. 4 Ks for Gelnar. Striking out Ellis. Like, how do you not put Al Kaline into this ball game? I mean, look how terrible this lineup is. I love these guys. You know that. I love Northrop. I love uh, Gates Brown. But the rest of the guys, you know, they're all backups. Hosley strikes out on that curveball. Back to back K's. Five now for Gelnar. Here's Gates Brown. Really the only guy in the lineup that concerns me. Hot shot to short. And Patek tosses him out. Good time for a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the top of the sixth. Tommy AG leading off. AG's 1 for 2 today. And he'll take a walk here. Now it's been a while since AG stolen a base. It's only a 67% chance. But I think we need to take that chance. This is one of those situations where everyone in the park knows he's going. What's Hosley's arm? It's an 86. That's just not accurate. Hosley was a pretty much a DH. Um, okay. Let's give it a shot. AG going on the first pitch. Fastball up high and AG steals second. That is his 28th stolen base of the year. Leading the team. We got a runner in scoring position. Nobody out. And McNurtney up. Let's see if he can hit it to the right side. Move him over. Oh, you dumbass. What a dumbass. What a dumb dumb. Well, okay. So, I have no faith. Now, there's only one out. So, we know the pitcher's going to get up. Are they they're not going to walk Kessinger or anything like that. Yeah, they are. So, we've got to take out Gelnar. We need these runs. Uh, I was on the fence anyway for keeping him in. Um, so, we got to bring in uh, Bill Robinson. A... Uh, Guy who's 4 for 14 for us. He's got a home run and two ribbies. Oh, shoot. All right. Um, he's only batting 2 8 versus lefties, but we've got to, we have to trust that he's capable. Full count. Oh, he gets a hold of it, sends it to right. AG will tag and go to third. That is not what we were looking for, but we do love having Gary Sutherland up in this situation. First and third, two down, and you know Sutherland crushes lefties. Here we go. First pitch, and a base at the center. That'll get us a run. Sutherland, an RBI single to center. AG scores. It's first and third with two down. Pilots are up 3-1. to one. Freddy Patek at the plate. He's 1-3 for three today. And a ground ball to third for out number 3. Okay. Um, we're going to bring in a reliever. It's nice to have that insurance run. I mean, we have to... We kind of have to pitch one of our schlubs. And you got to pick your poison here. Um, it's Brubaker or Dick Bates. I don't know. I guess we're bringing Dick Bates. We've got a two-run lead. we got to trust that Dick Bates can get his three outs. Here we go. Ron Woods. Leading off. Oh, comebacker to Bates. I thought for a moment that was an infield single. We'll take it though. One down. Here's Don Wirt. Wirt, one for one with a walk. 
in Dick Bates' short career. He glides it out to right center field for out number two. Tommy Magic's up. You have to think they're going to take out Les Kane, but I don't know. And he strikes out Magic. Well, that's a great job. Dick Bates comes in, mows him down. We go to the top of the seventh, and Les Kane will come out for another inning. He's at 101 pitches. Here is Lou Pinella. He's going to dump it into left center field. Little duck start, finds a hole, base hit. Pinella on first. That's his second hit of the day. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Yeah, he's two for four. Now Johnson's up. He struck out twice today. Doesn't really strike out, um, you know, to that degree as he flies out to center. One down. Here's Don Bosch. Bosch 0 for 1. Walk twice. That's a nice little curveball. It came right in on him, but couldn't get a hold of it. Popping it up in front of home plate where Hosley makes the catch. Two down. Tommy AG is up. AG. Ground ball to third. Goes out number three. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. We're going to take. Uh, oh, wow. Les Kane is going to bat. That is ridiculous. So we're going to take Bates out. He did his gerb. Skip Lockwood will come into the ballgame. Now, I know there's two lefties coming up, but you can't count Les Kane. I mean, this should be. Easy for Skippy. All right. Bob the seventh inning. Here's the pitcher, Les Kane. 2-2 two -two count. Yeah, overmatched. One out. Ike Brown. One for three. He struck out twice today. Make it a third time. Skip Lockwood. This is, might be my favorite guy. He's got 34 strikeouts and 34 innings pitched. Uh, Jim Northrip up, 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 and away. Striking off the side. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love this guy. He's my favorite player. Um, that's awesome. I think he's my favorite player on the team because he just comes in and mows everybody down. It's unbelievable. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Jerry McNerty leading off. I think when we go back out on defense, we're going to bring in some uh, defensive replacements. Here's McNerty. Pulls it to left. Caught by Brown. One out. Next man up is Kessinger. He's one for two. He's got an RBI today. That was a 3 0 count, and he was swinging. He's getting cocky. Two down. Skippy coming out of the game. Wayne Comer. Wait, doesn't Jerry May. Hit lefties well. 522. Let's give him a pinch hit. We don't normally do this with a backup catcher. Let's see if that 522 is legit. Oh, 2-2 two -two count. He pops it up. Alrighty then. So let's take a look at our defense. Um, we're going to bring in Van Kelly. At second. Um, wait. Okay, yeah. Let's. Yeah, we got to think defensively here. Okay, so Van Kelly's coming in at second base, and Mike Keegan will come in at first. And I know Jerry May's better than the other Jerry, but defensively, but I, I, McNerney's fine. Okay, and then we're going to bring in a reliever. It's time for Diego Sigui. Sigui is going to face Ellis Hosley and Gates Brown. Much improved defense. Here we go. 2-2 two -two count. And we struck out four batters in a row. Pop. 
pilots are for real. Make it... Oh, I thought we were going to get another one there. 2-2 two -two count. He pops it up to first. He can make him the catch. Here's the Gator. 1-2 count. Ground ball to Hegan. Nicely done. A 1-2-3 eighth inning. Les Kane coming back out. He's at 118 pitches. Van Kelly will lead off. He doesn't hit lefties well. Did he get a hit? Get down. Oh, wow. Kelly got a hit off of a left-hander. He's betting 0 59 That'll help out. Okay. Patek. Let's lay down a bunt. Lay down a fat bunt. Right back to the pitcher. Kelly is safe at second. So we have an insurance run in scoring position for Lou. Lou loves to have another crack here at Les Kane. He's two for four today. 0-2 count, and he strikes out looking on three straight pitches. That's ridiculous. That will bring up Mike Hegan. Some more lefty on lefty violence. I'd love to get two hits from a lefty on a lefty. Kane is tired officially. Ground ball to first. Nothing doing. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And it's time to bring in our closer, Mike Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. He's got 21 saves, three blueies. The rest of the numbers are immaculate. Doesn't walk many. He's got 41 strikeouts and 51 innings pitched. Posts are betting under 200. 26 year old righty goes to arbitration next year. What more could you ask for? Okay. And it's the bottom of the lineup. It's Woods, Wirt, and Magic do up. You got to imagine that the game is going to get you to Kane. Let's see here. Yep. So, he w I mean, I just said doesn't walk anybody, and then he walks someone. That run doesn't mean anything. Here we go. Don Wirt. Runner on first. High fly ball to left field. I wonder if they'll bring in Al Kaline out of the uh, off the bench. Woods on first base. Here's Tommy Magic. 0-2 count to Magic. Striking him out. The old walk strikeout combo. And it's going to be a Jimmy Price coming in. Betting 324 and crushing right handers. Betting 404 against him. So this is the guy you want in there. Um, you know what we're going to do? We are going to guard the lines then because of his success. Let's see if that helps at all. 0-1 count. Rip the left. Come on. And he makes the catch. Padella had to get back over there. Pilots win 3-1. to one. Handshakes, butt slaps, not base takes. Okay, another win. That feels good. Let's take a look at the standings. Everybody wins. So that doesn't help us at all. Baltimore has a half game lead over Cleveland. And New York's right back in it. That team is hard to watch. I mean, they've traded so many. Look at that. They only have 81 home runs. We have more home runs than the New York Yankees. That's crazy. Uh, well, I guess we'll take a look at the National League. San Diego, 44 and a half games back. I mean, this is a real contest over here, too, in the East. New York on top by a half game over Pittsburgh. St. Louis, three over on Philadelphia. And really, Chicago's lost seven in a row, but they're only six back. Headline news, Brainiac Baseball, Daily Beat, nothing to report. Transactions. Um, okay, we got some things. Jim Nash of Oakland signs a three-year extension. Um, yeah, so I got to go in there and edit that. So I will make that a major league contract. Ed Cranepool of the Metropolitans is going to miss 36 days. Um, that's when the Mets need him most, but he'll be back in time for the playoffs at least. And then Jim Nelson. Wait, did he just get injured? Am I crazy? Okay, so this he must have been a previous injury prior to the rest of the games being played because we just talked about him. 
Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, we got two more games versus the Tigers at Detroit. These are games we should be winning. Uh, player of the game. This is a tough, tough call. Um, AG did have the big hit. Uh, who's the player of the game? Oh, it was Kessinger. Uh, I mean, uh, game in the RBI was Kessinger. You know, I'm not feeling like any of these guys really deserve it. I think we're going to give it to AG, though, because he did have the stolen base um, that did lead to the run scored. Uh, so we're going to give it to him for being a catalyst today. John Gelnar gets the win. He's 7-1, and one, a guy that I expected nothing from. Uh, he's 7-1, and one, and Mike Marshall uh, gets his 22nd save. Don't forget that Skippy struck out the side. That guy's amazing. Les Kane, they left in there the whole game. He pitched okay. Uh, he takes the loss. He's 8-3. and three. So that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with Game 3 of the four-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.